Item Number SCP-6123 Object Class Keter Site Responsible Site 43 Director Alan J. McInnes Research Head Dr. Lillian S. Lillyhammer Assigned Task Force MTF Kappa 43 Special Containment Procedures Metatron.AIC is to scan email servers associated with media production companies, media studies departments at universities, and media-focused publications such as ET or Variety for any mention of SCP-6123. Upon confirmation of an SCP-6123 communication, MTF Kappa 43, the mediators, are to be dispatched to administer amnestics to the receiving parties. Stratagems concerning physical correspondence related to SCP-6123 are being considered, but at this time no apparent solutions have arisen. Until such time as the originating source of SCP-6123 communication is identified, the anomaly is to be considered Keter. Description SCP-6123 is a recurrent series of seminar programs entitled Media and You, aimed at fostering discussion of both the interpretation and creation of media. SCP-6123 occurs on an indeterminate basis and within an undetermined exospatial reality, but is reported to resemble a small conference center with capacity for a few hundred attendees. When an SCP-6123 event occurs, certain individuals chosen by currently unknown methodology will receive an invitation. Currently, SCP-6123 invitations take the form of email registration requests. Footnote 1 Prior to digital technology becoming household knowledge, the invitations were sent by physical mail. All attempts to track the correspondence to their source invariably failed. When the individual addressed on the invitation accesses the webinar, they anomalously manifest in the conference center SCP-6123 is held at. Discovery Dr. Lillian Lillyhammer Footnote 2 Memetics Researcher of Site-43 received the following email and alerted Site Director McInnes. 2. Lillian Lillyhammer, PhD, Site 43. From Marion McPherson, Vikander Need Public Outreach. Subject Exclusive Invitation to the Media and You Seminar. Date June 29, 2021. Hello, Lillian. May I call you Lillian? I feel like we already know you so well, with all the wonderful research you've been doing. Given your experience with media research, my team thinks you're a perfect fit for the upcoming seminar we're holding on July 5th at 9 o'clock EST. All you have to do is click this link and register with an original username and password. You know, the usual. I'm open for any and all questions you might have. And don't worry about cost. This is a free webinar. Have a great day. Mari. Having noticed that the email had apparently been sent by a member of GOI-5889, Vikander Need Technical Media, and after discussing the matter with Director McInnes, Dr. Lillyhammer decided to register for the event. She utilized recording devices on the given date, such as a recording program on her personal computer and backup body camera with vitals monitoring. The following is an abridged transcript of that recording. Footnote 3 a full recording or transcript is available upon authorized request to Dr. Lillyhammer. Addendum 6123-1 Recording of SCP-6123 Event Date Monday, July 5, 2021 Forward For research purposes, Dr. Lillyhammer will record the webinar as described in the email received from GOI-5889. Dr. Lillyhammer powers on her laptop. She is sitting in her living quarters at her personal desk. She sips from a coffee mug as she logs into the web portal provided by GOI-5889's registration process. As the session initiates, Dr. Lillyhammer demanifests from her living quarters and appears in a brightly lit conference center. What in the fuck? Dr. Lillyhammer drops her cup of coffee, which shatters on the floor. Dr. William Weddell, Footnote 4, Lead Replication Researcher at Site 43 manifests next to her just in time to have the coffee splash over his slacks. Ugh, son of a bit Lillian? Weddle? What are you doing here? Also, what happened? I got an invitation to join in on a webinar for media literacy, and then, boom, here I am, having your coffee splashed all over me. Focus, Weddle! We were just nabbed from the site under unknown anomalous means. Hello, Drs. Weddle and Lillyhammer. So nice to finally meet you. 
A female humanoid entity approaches the two researchers. The entity is dressed in a navy blue skirt suit with bright yellow tie and has a bloody bandage wrapped around the top 50% of her head, covering her eyes and nose. Dirty red hair can be seen slipping out of the bandage and hanging roughly to her shoulders. The suit is immaculate, except for droplets of blood on the lapels. Shaking Weddle's hand vigorously. I'm Mari McPherson. We chatted over email. Welcome. Lilyhammer takes a step back from the entity. What's wrong? You did sign up for the seminar, right? You seem to be bleeding. That's just my excited face. We're so glad you've come. Please step up to the registration table with the other attendees and get your name tags. The entity turns away to speak with someone else, who darts around her with a wide-eyed look and heads towards the registration table on the other side of the hall. Does my soul good to see enthusiasm for media literacy? Okay, you two have fun. I'll be wanting to hear what you think during the breakout sessions. Lilyhammer turns to Weddle. I don't have the faintest clue how we got brought here and it's pissing me off. But the thing I don't get most of all, why the hell are you here, Weddle? <laughs> are you kidding? What's more relevant to media than replication? Lilyhammer groans audibly. What now? I just hate it when you're right. It happens so rarely I never see it coming. Lilyhammer and Weddle spend approximately 10 minutes trying to secure an exit from the building, but cannot find any doors or windows that lead to the exterior. Given the lack of available exits, the researchers decide to sit in on the seminars. It just occurred to me that you intentionally signed up for a VKTM seminar without official approval, you imbecile. I skimmed the email. Extraneous 15 minutes cut for brevity, in which Lilyhammer and Weddle go through the registration table and are shown to the first session's meeting room. The first brief meeting outlines the roadmap for the seminars during the day. Said roadmap is recreated below. The following is an abridged transcript of the sessions provided. Only those sections relevant to the anomaly have been included with this file. Theory, Authors and Audiences the conference room is lit by fluorescent bulbs and populated with over 50 other attendees, each with a name tag and sitting in a folding plastic chair. At the front of the room is a stage with a podium. The presenter walks up behind the podium and adjusts the microphone. He is a male humanoid of advanced age with lightly purple-hued skin. His voice is strong, but metallic. He has no nose, but instead an empty cavity. My name is Rodolfo Boots Gorsach. No, you may not call me Boots. I'm here to discuss the first of today's seminars, authors and audiences. Jesus, he's a barrel of laughs. I don't know. I like him. A woman in front of the two researchers turns around to shush Weddle. Lilyhammer covers her mouth to laugh. Please, 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 no talking. It's rude. Yeah, Weddle. What is this, high school? I'm a doctor. Are you two quite finished? Or perhaps would you like to give the presentation? Neither researcher says anything. Thank you. Where was I? Ah, so, the central concept at play here is the vast difference between those who make media and those who consume it. Authors design the content, audiences consume it. Easy, right? Well, there's more to it. If you want to consume media intelligently, or create media with the intent of it being consumed intelligently, the art is important. What do I mean by art? I mean the coding and implanting a meaning in your media, of course. It can get messy. Lilyhammer raises her hand. What? Usually questions are for the end, young lady. Apologies, Mr. Gorsuch, but when you say messy, what do you mean? What do I mean? All the viscera, obviously. Now, can I continue? Please hold any further questions to the end. Theory, Messages and Meanings This session's presenter is a large female entity, height estimated at just under 3 meters. She is wearing a white-on-white three-piece suit. Her voice is quiet, but melodic, speech often echoed with a sound matching that of an 1874 Stradivarius violin being plucked. She introduces herself as herbaceous Willoughby. Meaning is easy. What the author intends the media to say, and how it could be interpreted. We don't really need to belabor that point, I think. Now, the important thing to understand about messages is that the medium matters. What form is your media taking? A novel, a radio show, a dark ritual of Serenur, a podcast, a film. Each has its own positives and negatives regarding the communication of the meaning you as media providers will intend. Weddle clears his throat and just starts speaking at a loud volume. <clears throat> uh, what was that middle one you mentioned? Oh, radio show. I know it's a wonder to all of us that people still listen to radio. I'm not surprised you forgot it exists. Moving right along. 
Theory, Representations, and Reality. The presenter of this session is a quadrupedal entity resembling a moose with stark grey fur from the neck down. Instead of a typical head, the entity has three screens on articulated arms that continually flash through various images. The presenter's voice is an 87.89% match to that of deceased TV host Regis Philbin. The entity does not provide a name. Now, listen here. Representation is the way you frame the media in question. Production quality, vector, length, star power, writing, all these things make up representation. It's the bow and wrapping paper you put on a gift for your sweetie on Samhain. Presenter Gamma proceeds to cough for 12 minutes. During this period, the images on the entity's screens depict war, disease, poverty, and common violence. Jeez, someone get him a lozenge. Where would you put it? <coughs> uh, excuse me, my, my allergies have been terrible all week. Now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Whereas reality is what the media is actually trying to impart. Take a car commercial or advert for health insurance communicating the joys in life. That is the representation. The reality is they want you to buy a thing. Lunch break. Lilyhammer and Weddle are in a cafeteria, sitting at a round table with food in front of them. Surrounding them are other attendees at other tables. Several of the individuals seen on Lilyhammer's body camera look emotionally distressed. Many are not eating. One woman wearing a white blazer and pencil skirt is rocking herself back and forth. She has a name tag that reads, Ainsley Earhart. Can't believe you're eating that. Weddle is mechanically eating the meal in front of him. Ham sandwich on rye with avocado and a bag of chips. Mm. I'm hungry, Lillian. Look where we are. I'm not eating a thing here. Besides, Grim Countenance Protocol strictly prohibits the consumption of food while in an unknown extra-dimensional space. I notice you're not holding back from drinking the coffee. I'm not a monster. It's Arabica. Weddle nearly falls from his seat as a loud voice starts speaking behind him. Oh, I'm so glad you like the food, William. I had it flown in from my favorite place in Philly. The entity turns to Lilyhammer. Not hungry, Lillian? No, I'm fine. Just coffee for me. There are vegan and vegetarian options if you prefer. I want you to have a good time. McPherson leans over the table as she's speaking to Lilyhammer. Some blood droplets fall from her bandages and land on Weddell's sandwich. No, thank you, though. Actually, I have a question, if you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. That's what I'm here for. What is it you people are trying to do here? Like, what's the purpose of kidnapping 50-something professionals to attend a seminar in an undisclosed location? Hmm. People. Oh, you mean Vicander Need. People, right. We're people. Um, our goal is to increase media literacy, of course. It's all part of the better tomorrow. Footnote 5. Recording did not actually register the phrase TM, but invariably transcripts have included it and the notation cannot be deleted for unknown reasons. Right. Well, then how about this? Who are the other attendees? Academics, professionals in the advertising and media production industry, cultists, and many more. You should introduce yourselves. You never know when some networking could lead to a new connection. McPherson moves on to another table. Weddle is staring at the drops of blood on his sandwich. Still hungry, Willie? Weddle groans and pushes his plate away from him. Application. Making media that matters. Gorsatch has returned to present for this session. Occasionally, he pulls a bottle of Coca-Cola brand soft drink to his nose cavity and pours some inside. Every time he does this, he makes a noise that is interpreted to represent pleasure. Now for the good stuff. How do we make media that matters? See, the question I'm asking is, how do we make sure your media is content that makes an impact for the community? Well, let me tell you, it's not simple. First you. The remainder of this session's recording has been redacted for fear of mimetic corruption and for reasons of good taste. Approximately one hour passes. Weddle and Lilyhammer exit the conference room. Her breathing and heart rate are elevated. It is clear she has been crying. She rubs at her eyes. Weddle stops by a trash can to vomit. Application. Audience engagement. This session's presenters are presenter Gamma and an entity consisting of a shower of sparks in the shape of a human male. It is introduced as Javier Carnelian. 
We've covered the basics, but I know what you're all really here for. How do we get the audience to engage with the media? I'll tell you. There's no one better to speak on that subject than my friend Javier. Take it away. Static and the sounds of screeching metal for three minutes. Exactly. Memetics. If you want your audience to engage with whatever media you're slinging, you gotta encode that sucker with a memetic virus. In this day and age of Twitter and TikTok, people only seem to consume in small bursts of attention. So, you gotta worm your way into their heads and get them to spread that engagement like the memetic vectors they've been trained to be their whole lives. Cacophonous explosions reminiscent of a fireworks display persist for 96 seconds. Of course, always meme responsibly. We're not in the business of scorching brain pans after all. <laughs> Presenter Gamma coughs for 30 seconds, wailing and more screeching metal sounds for 22 seconds. <coughs> no, <coughs> no, I'm, I'm alright. Just these damn allergies. Anyway, like I was saying, you can't trust the audience to get obsessively invested in your media as easy as it was in the old days. This isn't charity, right? This is about selling products. So, trust me when I say, Put an infectious memetic center into whatever your media is. That's the ticket. Application. Reading between the lines. Herbaceous Willoughby makes a return as presenter for the final session. So, in conclusion, the important thing to realize is if you're injecting code and compulsions into your media, then Disney is certainly doing it too. What, you think the Marvel movies are reinforcing the military-industrial complex and making heroes out of billionaires because the source material says so? Media is there to communicate ideas, and the best way for someone to do that is to encode that media with a forced compulsion to the audience to do what they want. Willoughby takes a sip of water and gargles for 30 seconds. You gotta be on your guard when you're checking out the competition. You don't want that mimetic cluster you spent weeks and literal pints of blood on for that Viagra commercial to get mixed up with Warner's new compulsion to start a cannibalistic cell of Randian philosophy just because you weren't paying attention. Cross-pollination of media memetics is dangerous stuff. Just look at the Kardashians. They haven't finished picking out the viscera from the crater and it's been almost six months. At the end of the sessions, the attendees, including Weddle and Lilyhammer, were asked to confirm their contact information and handed a goodie bag. After providing their contact information, Lilyhammer and Weddle demanifested and found themselves where they had originally logged into the webinar. Dr. Lilyhammer submitted a proposal to Director McInnes for an expanded program of media research on memetics in all major media outlets and publications. Director McInnes forwarded the proposal to Overwatch Command, but was told the potential cost of such a venture made it unlikely in the current fiscal quarter. The proposal is slated to be considered at the beginning of next quarter. After six weeks, all other attendees were identified and administered amnestics. A total of 15 articles describing SCP-6123 written by attendees were taken off the web, and wide targeting amnestics were encoded in the publications to stem the impact on the public. Addendum 6123-2 Upon Doctors Weddle and Lilyhammer's report concerning the events as described in the above log, Director McInnes ordered the goodie bags, designated SCP-6123-1, quarantined and examined under Class A security protocols. They contained one black large-sized unisex t-shirt with the Vikander Need logo on the back. One battered cardstock advertisement of Vikander Need services with contact information on the reverse side, reproduced below. One flash drive loaded with a highlight reel of GOI 5889's productions. Contained within is a memetic cognito hazard with an anomalous effect implanting a compulsion to sign up for GOI 5889's newsletter. One $60 gift card to Bed Bath & Beyond. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Rubbishbin69, Tannis, Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.